Hello everyone. Welcome to I Exam B. Please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. This is Aditi, Economics Faculty at I Exam B, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the first advance estimates of national income for the financial year 2021-2022 released by the government of India, and which is also relevant for the upcoming SEBI Grade A examination. The National Statistical Office under the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation has released these estimates on 7th of January 2022. This uh, practice of releasing the advance estimates has been followed since 2016-17 in order to serve as essential inputs to the budget exercise because the budget is supposed to be released in the first week of February. So advanced estimates are provided because of that. And the benchmark indicator method is used to arrive at these estimates in which the estimates for the previous year are extrapolated using relevant indicators in order to arrive at the estimates for the current financial year. The major highlights of this release are that the real GDP growth rate is estimated at 9.2%, whereas the nominal GDP growth rate is estimated at 17.6%. And so the difference between the two, which is the inflation rate, is 8.4%. Nominal GDP projected by the advance estimate is 232.15 trillion. And the fiscal deficit as percentage of GDP in budget estimates is 6.8%. Now, what are these aggregates, GDP, real GDP, real GDP, growth rate, nominal GDP and nominal GDP growth rate. So GDP is the market value of all the final goods and services produced within the domestic territory of an economy within a year, usually a financial year. Whereas <clears throat> real GDP growth rate is giving the growth rate in GDP at the constant price, which is the base year price, which is 2011-12 in India. And the nominal GDP growth rate is the growth rate of GDP at current prices, which is referring to the current financial year. So this is also reflecting the inflation that has happened in the previous years, which is the increase in the level of prices. Now, let's look at the estimates that were released in some detail. So, the government has released these estimates, gross value added at basic prices. And these are released for current prices as well as for the base year prices, which is 2011-12 prices. Now, the gross value added among the different eight sectors of the economy, agriculture, forestry and fishing, mining and quarrying, manufacturing, electricity, gas, water supply and other utility services, construction, trade hotels, transport, communication and services related to broadcasting, financial, real estate and professional services and the public administration, defense and other services. The gross value added among these eight sectors are added to arrive at the GVA, at the basic prices for the whole economy. Now, what do you understand by basic prices? What is basic price? So basic prices includes the total cost of production and the taxes and subsidies, which are production specific and not product specific. And therefore, when Net indirect taxes from product are added to the gross value added at basic price. The figure which we get is the gross domestic product at market price. 
So through the gross value added, we arrive at the gross domestic product at market price by adding the net indirect taxes from product. Now, there are various other aggregates which are important like GDP, GNP, NDP, NNP and whether at basic price, market price or at factor cost. So now through a flow chart, let's look at how these aggregates are interrelated. So now we arrived at the gross domestic product at market price. When net factor incomes from abroad is added to this gross domestic product at market price, we arrive at gross national product at market price. So the distinction of domestic and national is of net factor incomes from abroad. So net factor income from abroad is the difference between the factor payments from abroad and the factor payments made to abroad and therefore this is the difference the domestic and national so now this aggregate is giving the market value of all goods and services produced by the residents of the economy whereas this gives the market value of all goods and services produced within the domestic territory of the economy. Now, when depreciation is subtracted from this aggregate, we arrive at the net domestic product at market price. So now this gross becomes net after subtracting depreciation. And when NFIA is added to this, we arrive at net national product at market price. When product tax is subtracted from this figure and product subsidy is added, we arrive at net domestic product at basic price. Now what is product tax? Product tax could be excise tax, sales tax or import and export duties, all these things. What are product subsidies? Product subsidies could be subsidies on food, petroleum, fertilizer, etc. Now, when I subtract this, when I account for this uh, net taxes on net indirect taxes on product, I arrive at the net domestic product at the basic price. When I further subtract production tax from, from this aggregate and add production subsidy, I arrive at the net domestic product at factor cost. So what is production tax? Production tax is the land revenues, stamps, registration fees and tax on profession. All these are production tax. And what are production subsidies? Production subsidies could be subsidy to railways or input subsidy to farmers. All these are production subsidies. When these are accounted for in this aggregate net domestic product at basic price, we arrive at net domestic product at factor cost. When I add NFIA to this, I arrive at net national product at factor cost. Now, the government does not release all the estimates, all these figures. These are only for understanding purposes as to how these are converted from GDP at MP and this flow chart can help in understanding the relationship between the different aggregates. Uh, now let's uh, discuss some questions related to these aggregates. So who releases the data on estimates of GDP? NSO, CSO, NSSO, RBI or Ministry of Finance? The correct answer is NSO, National Statistical Office, under the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. Earlier CSO used to release this data, but the National Sample Survey Office merged with CSO 
to form the National Statistical Office in May 2019. So since then we call it NSO. Which base year is currently used in calculating the GDP estimates? 2011-12, 2016-17, 2021-22, 2004-2005 or 2010-11? The correct answer 2011-12. However, there are proposals on shifting this base year practice and moving to a chain-based index method. Which of the following is not a part of national income? Undistributed profits, income from government expenditure, the interest amount on the unproductive national debt, the payments made by a household to a firm for purchasing goods and services, all are part of national income. Number five. The correct answer is the interest amount on the unproductive national debt. Undistributed profits are part of national income because these are income earned by the factor of production. Income from government expenditure is also part of the national income because this is part of the government final consumption expenditure. Payments made by a household to a firm for purchasing goods and services is also part of the national income. This comes under the private consumption expenditure. Whereas interest on the unproductive national debt are not accounted for in the national income. This is not part of the national income. Next question is, which of the following is not an indirect tax? Sales tax, excise duty, estate tax, custom duty or all are indirect taxes. The correct option is estate duty. Estate duty is a type of direct tax. And this was nothing but a tax which was levied on the total value of the property which was held by an individual and which was calculated at the time of the death of that individual. And it was payable only when the property was passed on to the successors. So this is not an indirect tax. And however, India does not have estate duty or inheritance tax at present. This was abolished by the Rajiv Gandhi government in the year 1985. Next question, which of the following best defines net national income? GNP plus depreciation, GNP minus depreciation, GDP minus depreciation, NDP minus depreciation or none of the above. The correct answer to this question is GNP minus depreciation as we also saw in the earlier flow chart. The difference between net and gross is only of depreciation. Now I want to leave you with a practice question in the end. What is fiscal deficit? The options are total receipts minus total expenditure or revenue receipts plus recovered loan and other receipt minus total expenditure or Revenue receipts minus revenue expenditure or revenue receipts minus total expenditure or none of the above. Please reply in the comments section. If you are interested in any form of guidance, I would like to tell you that at I exam B, we provide the complete CB grade A online course in which we give you video lessons, study notes, practice tests, live sessions, interview guidance with the expert and presently we are giving a flat 40% discount on the course. So you simply need to use the code SEBI40 S -E -B -I 40 SEBI40 to avail this offer. If you have any query you can write in the comment box or you can also write your query at hello at iexambi.com or you can call us on this number which is displayed on the screen if you have any query related to the course. Don't forget to subscribe our channel to get the latest updates. Thank you so much.